Do you ever wonder why trendy clothes are so darn cheap? Of course you don't, because you don't really want to know, do you? Clothing companies certainly don't want you to know how it's possible for you to rock your diaper booty bottom look for less than a pack of diapers. Nevertheless, in 2011, one unwitting Primark customer got a peek behind the curtain when they found a note from a Chinese garment worker slipped into the pocket of their new pants. The note said, we work 15 hours every day and eat food that wouldn't even be fed to pigs and dogs. We are forced to work like oxen. So yeah, Mackenzie, maybe choose something else for your exotic Chinese character tattoo. Unfortunately, the work conditions described by this exploited garment worker are all too common in an industry that employs 60 million people worldwide, most of whom are women. If all the clothes you bought came with notes that told the truth about how they were made, they might say things like, made for children, by children. Or if you think the construction of this asymmetrical top is faulty, you should see the factory it was sewn in. Oh wait, you can't because it collapsed, killing hundreds. Next time you're about to buy a cheap ass top from H&M, just remember the H and M stand for Hail Mary. I hope I make it out of this collapsing factory alive. The most widespread issue facing garment workers is a lack of living wage. So nearly all the clothes you buy could come with a message like this. <laughs> But wait, how can supposedly responsible brands like Zara, Gap, and Nike get away with sweatshop conditions and starvation wages in factories that make their clothes? Think of it this way. Brands are like contestants on the amazing race to the bottom. In this global scavenger hunt, the world's richest clothing companies scour the world's poorest countries for suppliers who can provide the quickest, the cheapest clothing manufacturing with the least government interference. No minimum wage, score. No enforceable workplace safety regulations, score. No unions, ha, score. No right to protest or better legal working conditions, score. When brands outsource production to factories overseas, it's like they're willfully ignoring the existence of labor rights hard earned over the past century. You know, little things like having a minimum wage and a 40 hour work week, paying women equally, banning child labor, and providing safe work environments where one is not likely to get maimed or killed. If brands want to go back to the labor practices of the 1800s, perhaps they also think school teachers should go back to whacking left-handed students with rulers, or doctors should go back to bloodletting with leeches to cure all that ails you. In addition to well-known apparel brands, large e-commerce research Sellers like Amazon also ignore the fact that many of their clothing vendors' supply chains abuse garment workers' basic rights. And when bad stuff inevitably happens at garment factories, say due to unsafe working conditions, brands ghost the suppliers that make their clothes faster than most dudes I meet on Tinder. Hey Adidas, last night was fun, but you know, a little unsafe. Can we talk? For example, when Bangladesh's Rana Plaza garment factory building collapsed in 2013, killing 1,134 people, Walmart falsely claimed they did not have production there and initially refused to pay out compensation to the victims' families. Come on, Walmart, we got receipts. No, literally, your production order receipts were found amidst the rubble. Now, you might be thinking, that's terrible, but all clothing companies can't be so irresponsible. Maybe you're even hoping that your favorite clothing company isn't one of the known offenders. Well, here's a list of some known offenders. Go ahead, take a look. Is your favorite brand on this list? I'm guessing it is. <sighs> There are no brands that pay a living wage throughout their entire supply chain. Failing to respect garment workers' basic rights is an industry-wide issue. And the thing is, brands mark up their clothing prices so much it would hardly make a dent in their sizable profits to do right by garment workers. Even if brands pass the cost on to customers, research suggests the increase would hardly be noticeable. Perhaps just one to four percent. That's pocket change to end what amounts to modern-day slavery. Look, 
The garment industry is not going to change on its own, and the countries where most suppliers are based are so poor, they're not about to enforce labor rights for fear of losing business. That leaves you, the customer. I mean, now you know, right? You can't really buy clothes without exploiting workers. So I want you to take off your shirt, your pants, your bra. Go naked. Then check the labels on your clothes. No matter where they were made, you can be pretty sure the garment worker who made them was not paid a living wage. So before you put your clothes back on, tweet at the clothing brand or e-commerce reseller something like, hey Amazon, I'm not wearing any clothes you sell until you make sure your suppliers pay garment workers a living wage now. To make a bigger impact, perhaps post your message with a tasteful implied nude. It may be the only way to get your favorite clothing brand's attention. 